Yongsan City Memorial Exhibition Hall is holding an exhibit, July 16th Yongsan. It shows footage for the first time in South Korea of the July 16, 1950 U.S. bombing of Yongsan, Central Seoul's district, which killed hundreds of civilians. U.S. B-29 bombers sent to destroy military targets like Yongsan Station Switchyard also hit civilian buildings. Three weeks before, on June 25th, the Korean War had broken out and North Korean forces had crossed the 38th parallel, capturing Seoul just three days later. The footage obtained from the U.S. National Archives and Records Administration shows bombs being dropped and bodies strewn on the ground. Videos and photos edited from it are organized under four themes to highlight wartime suffering and healing after the 1953 armistice. The bombing killed at least 1,587 of Yongsan's 193,000 residents, and 47 B-29 bombers dropped some 1,500 bombs as this bomber was highly inaccurate and had to drop many bombs. The event draws many curious visitors from Seoul and Greater Seoul's smaller cities and towns. I'm glad the footage was released. Forgetting this incident would be a tragedy. We should not ignore or hide an unexpectedly large number of civilian deaths an aerial bombing unintentionally caused. West of Seoul in Incheon, General Douglas MacArthur's statue overlooks the port where he led the famed September 1950 landing that led to the South recovering Seoul. Some people criticize him because uh, he did not take, at least this is what they say, enough care to minimize uh, civilian casualties during the bombing of Yonsan Station in 1950. In his latest speech on the anniversary of Korea's liberation from Japan's colonial rule at World War II's end, the same day Korea was divided, the South's president urged inter-Korean peace, the exhibit's underlying message. East and West Germany achieved unification after 45 years. Division is the biggest obstacle to our growth and prosperity, a tenacious barrier to permanent peace. Like Germany, we can remove it.